So good to see you uh, this morning. I hope you're staying warm. Uh, Acts chapter 5, that's our reading uh, for this morning. As always, thank you um, so much for, for joining me. You know, we're coming off really a, a wonderful, and encouraging chapter in Acts chapter 4 as we see the Lord's church essentially in, in its infancy. Um, but we see a brethren strong in faith, strong in love for uh, for one another. We, we see courage, certainly. And we see, we see brethren putting their, their trust in God. We, we see them being there um, for one another. And, and it really warms our, our, our hearts when we read those things. You know, the chapter ends by way of introducing us to a man. And the apostles had given the name Barnabas, meaning son of encouragement. And we're told that, that Barnabas had sold a, a tract of land that, that he owned. He had brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And um, so all of this, uh, you know, just, just worthy of, of our imitation. When we get to Acts chapter 5, um, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we have an instance that, that we can certainly learn from, but, but one that's not worthy of imitation. Acts chapter 5, but let's read the first 11 verses together um, this morning. The Bible says, But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself with his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you've conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. As he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last. Great fear came over all who heard of it. The young men who got up and covered him up, and, and after carrying him out, they buried him. Now there elapsed an interval of about three hours, and his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter responded to her, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. She said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, why is it that you've agreed together to, to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard of these things. You know, unfortunately, we, we know the names Ananias and Sapphira for all the wrong reasons. You know, like Barnabas and many of the other disciples, as we're told in. Um, Acts chapter 4, they, they sold a, a piece of land and they brought the proceeds and they, they laid them at the apostles' feet. Now, now here's what's interesting about this. No, nobody forced them to do this. They weren't necessarily commanded to do this. They, I, I don't think, would have been sinning in, in, in not doing this necessarily. I, I think you understand what I, what I mean when I say that. In, in fact, in verse 4, Peter says essentially that, that he didn't have to sell the property. And after, after they sold it, the, the, the proceeds were, were theirs. In Acts chapter 5, verse 4, he says, what well, remained unsold. Did it, did it not remain your own? And it, after it was sold, was it not under your control? You know, Peter confronts Ananias. He asks you, why has Satan filled your heart to, to lie to the Holy Spirit? And he, he kept back a portion for himself. Peter wants to know, why would you allow Satan in. Why, why would you fall for, for this? At the end of verse 4, why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You've not lied to men, but to God, Peter says. You know, while, while the text doesn't come right out and say, uh, I, I think the inference is clear. that They lied about what was given. Him and Sapphira conspired together to lie to God. Verse 5 says, and he heard these words, and Ananias collapsed and died, and great fear came upon all of them who had heard about it. The young men got up, covered him up, and carrying him out, they buried him. Peter is going to go on to confront Sapphira, and he asked her to tell him whether they sold the land for this price. And she responded, yes. They tested the spirit of the Lord, Peter says, and she too was struck dead. And verse 11 tells us that great fear came over the whole church. I bet. You know, there, there's a number uh, of takeaways as we read this just un most un unfortunate thing. And I think the focus a lot of the time when we read this is, is God's reaction to all of this. Um, it's kind of shocking. Um, you know, unfortunately, not sure what this reveals a a about us, but, but I think, or at least me, I, I read it and think, did, did the punishment really justify the, the crime or the sin here? Certainly there was lying, certainly there was manipulation, but essentially at the end of the day, I, I guess you could say they did a good thing, and 
you know, as, as I think about it, really, you know, all I can say is this, you know, when, when you think about other instances where people were struck dead by God in our, in our Old Testament, you, there's Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus chapter 10. I, I think about Korah and those uh, 250 Israelite uh, leaders of Israel. You, you think about Nadab and Abihu offering unauthorized fire and then Korah and those leaders essentially usurping uh, God's uh, authority. And we recognize those things to be bad, right? Worthy of death. In our minds, those things, while bad, uh, worthy of God's reaction? Maybe not. Here's what we know about God. God is perfect. And his judgment is perfect. And his divine justice is perfect. He knows the hearts of men. And here's my takeaway. You know, brethren and friends, oftentimes what seems trivial to us is a big deal to God. When you consider the attitude behind these sins, they were grievous to God. And certainly we see his reaction. So we're left, I think, to ask, why would Ananias and Sapphira do this? Why not just be honest about giving a portion of the proceeds. I think that would have been a good thing to do, it seems to me. It would have been a very generous thing and loving thing to do. We're not told why they did what they did. But it seems to me that they were more concerned about what others thought of them than ultimately being pleasing to God. You know, in Acts chapter 4, we're, we're left, as we alluded to at the beginning, with the example of Barnabas. You know, maybe they wanted people to think of them as, as people thought of Barnabas, but without the personal sacrifice and cost. It wasn't enough for them, to, for uh, people to, to, to think of them as giving a portion. They wanted people to think that they'd given the whole thing. And obviously... We can see from God's reaction, their hearts, their, their motives, they weren't right. They lied. They manipulated. And I'm reminded, it's not just what we do that matters to God. It matters as well why we do it. God knows our hearts. He knows the why. Brethren and friends, we need to examine our hearts. Even the good that we're doing, why do we do it? Do we do it to be seen of men, to be applauded by men? Or Here's the crux of the matter. Is it for the glory of God? Are we doing good to exalt the name of God? Or to exalt self, because there's a big difference. You know, in the age of social media, there's, how should I put this? I think there's a temptation for us to post all the good that we're doing, even churches collectively to post all the good that we're doing. And I'm not saying that there's not time and place, but it all depends upon your heart. And I would just encourage all of us to be mindful of this trap. Listen, let's continue to do good. As we have opportunity, let's do good. Let's do good to our fellow man, but let's do good for the right reason. Let's examine our hearts to make sure we're doing the good for the right reason. The right reason being to glorify God, to bring honor to him. You know, I, I think Jesus certainly in his interactions with, with the Pharisees. He, he certainly recognized this danger, and he, he warned uh, against this. And in Matthew chapter 6, at verse 1, as we wind down, Jesus would say this, Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. 
So when you give to the poor, don't sound the trumpet for you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, so that they would be praised by people. Truly, I say to you that they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your charitable giving will be in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Brethren, I, I know among us at Kenwood that so much good um, is being done. And oftentimes it's not, um, nobody knows about it necessarily. Um, sometimes it's years later you'll hear something about it. Sometimes it's not till that person's funeral that you hear how brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so has had done something for someone or had served their, their, their fellow man. And I certainly have been blessed at Kenwood to um, be the recipient of so much goodness. I, I know and I'm confident goodness for the right reason. But I think if we're honest, this is a trap. This is a temptation for all of us. And this is a good reminder for me, good reminder for you. Let's be reminded that God knows our hearts. He knows the why. We can fool each other. Sometimes we can even fool ourselves. But God knows our hearts. For the applause of men or for the glory of God. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, thank you so much for the abilities that you bless us with, Father, for the resources that you bless us with, for the financial prosperity that you bless us with, for all the good things, Father, that you bless us with. Father, help us to recognize that you give us these good things to serve our fellow man and ultimately to glorify you. These things are yours. Father, may we always be more concerned with your glory as opposed to our own. Father, bless us with opportunities to do good. And may your name be exalted as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.